Let's look at three different models of stress. Stress meaning how humans respond to, to pressure. Now, stress, we all know what stress feels like, and we all have this good intuitive knowledge of what stress is. But when we actually try to measure it, it becomes quite uh, difficult and quite complex, and we need to be uh, careful with our terms. What we generally do in organizational behavior and in organizational psychology is we make a distinction between the stressors that are outside of us and the stress which we feel inside and we experience in our, in our body inside of us. So we've got the stressors on the outside and the stress on the inside. So let's look at different ways of explaining what stress is. The first model is the simplest model. And this was started by, uh, first presented by Selly in 1956. And he basically said stress is the re response of the human body to demands made on it. Stress is the response to whatever these stressors are on us that are, that are telling us that we need to act in a, a certain way. And uh, this works as a pretty good way of understanding uh, stress. We're going to see that there's other ways that are a little bit more uh, sophisticated. But one of the things that we see with this simple model is that stress isn't necessarily bad. There can be what's known as good stress or eustress. That suffix eu is Greek for good. And then distress is the bad stress. And what we have in this diagram, along this axis, we've got an increased stress. And so this is going from down here is like no stress at all. You're just sitting there. Nobody cares at all what you do. And then the increased stress is all kinds of things that are happening around you, making all kinds of demands on you, more than you ever thought uh, possible, and perhaps more than is possible to deal with. And then this y-axis is your performance level. How well are you doing? Are you, the, the higher the performance, the more you're getting done, the more problems you're solving, the better life is getting. The lower uh, performance level is you're not accomplishing anything constructive. And what happens is we have an inverted U-shape curve here. Sometimes this is called, see it makes a, a U-shape, an inverted U. And sometimes it's called a Goldilocks curve because right in the middle it's just right. And when stress is really low, um, like if, if at work you don't have any responsibilities, nobody cares what you do, um, nobody's coming around to ask you anything, you might be bored to death. Um, uh, you might get a f occasional things to do, but you could still be underachieving. As it starts increasing, Oh, you start waking up a little bit, and with a, a at some point you start to actually start performing well and start getting uh, stuff done. You become in, creative and energetic, and at some point you reach your uh, peak performance. But then, if the demands keep increasing, you start getting tired and distracted, and this can turn into exhaustion and, in extreme cases, disorientation and breakdown. Um, I've, uh, I've only gone into this dort disorientation period uh, uh, once. Um, it, it was bad. Um, I ended up a week in the hospital. Um, when there's too many things happening, things uh, can get really, really bad. So, so let's look at how this can happen. You now, this happens in all areas of life. Let's say that you're in kind of a, a, a dead-end job where you don't, you're not challenged, it's not interesting. So you decided you need to, to do something about it. And so what you do is you sign up for a master's degree program or something like that. And sure enough, you find out you've got homework and deadlines, you've got videos to watch, and you're becoming pretty productive. You're creative, you're energetic, you're, and you're, if things go well, you'll be, at peak performance, accomplishing as much as you as as is possible, life is going pretty well. And suppose that now you have a baby, and so you've got work and school and a baby. Oh, what's going to happen? There's going to be fatigue. You're distracted. 
Maybe your school work's not quite as good. Maybe your uh, work work's not quite as good. But then you start having, uh, you start fighting with your spouse. Oh, that's adding more stress. Um, exhaustion, disorientation, and it can, can lead down to a breakdown of the marriage, of your of your own person. When there's too many things going on, things go down uh, uh, really poorly. Now this is interesting because if you didn't, if you weren't in a master's program, previously when you had a disagreement with your uh, spouse, that disagreement could make you creative and energetic and you'd find new ways to solve problems, new ways of looking at things, um, new ways of uh, loving each other. But with the added stress of the baby and the master's program, it can be too much and send us into this distress uh, region. So what we need to do is we need to make sure we organize our life so that we live in this eustress. We have enough things going on so that we're really productive from a Christian perspective so that we're living up to our full potential and can use everything that we have for God's glory without getting pushed into the distress uh, 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 situation, at least not for very long. Sometimes we're going to have to. I, I don't think anybody can have a, a baby without feeling uh, uh, fatigue and being distracted to some degree or another. Um, but we, we want to organize our lives so that we get back into this eustress uh, uh, perspective. So this is the simplest model of stress. It's Stress is the response of the human body made to the demands on it. Now here's a little bit more sophisticated um, uh, model of stress developed by Lazarus. And it has the stressors out here. And then we look at a couple different things. We have the primary assessment and we have the secondary assessment. The primary assessment is how threatening is the situation. Oh, do I see uh, uh, I uh, um, uh, I see an animal running towards me? Ooh, that could not be good. The secondary assessment is: Do I know how to respond to that threat? Oh, is it some animal that I can just step out of the way when he runs towards me? Um, uh, or is it some animal that's going to uh, eat me, and there's no way that I'm going to be able to defend myself uh, uh, against it? And so stress results from the difference between our assessment of the situation and our assessment of how well we can respond. And so it's our primary assessment minus our second ass secondary assessment equals stress. Let's take a, a work-related um, uh, uh, example. Suppose that your manager says, oh, we're totally changing your position, and you are going to become the editor of the company newsletter and that's going to be your main responsibility and you have to create a 16 page newsletter every uh, uh every month so you've got the primary assessment of like ooh, i've got to analyze what's it going to take to make a 16 page newsletter every month and then but you're also going to uh ask yourself do i know how to respond to that threat now some people would say oh this is my dream job. I was a journalism major in college. I love putting together newsletters. I can't think of anything better that I would like to do. And this is my chance to have a great influence on the company. And um, so that person, the, the difference between their primary assessment, even if they know it's going to take many, many, many hours each month to do it, their secondary assessment says, hey, I'm up to it and this is going to be fun. So they're not going to feel too much stress. Now, another person, on contrast, might have the exact same assignment, but they say, oh, no, I have no idea how to do a newsletter. I hate writing. I hate networking. I won't have time for the project that um, I really want to do. This is, my life is, is going to go downhill really quickly. So their secondary assessment is that this is a major threat to them, and so the difference between the primary assessment and their ability to respond constructively to it is, is quite large. They're going to feel a lot of stress. So here, it's not so much the stressors, it's the stressors relative to how we know to respond, how to respond to them and how interested we are in them and how, how, how positively we uh, uh, view them 
that um, determines how much stress. So some people in some situations will fall will experience a lot of stress, and a lot other people will experience no stress in the exact same situation because of their secondary assessment. The third model is called the person environment fit. It's kind of similar to model two, where you look at the situation and you look at the, the person and you look at the different, but in the person environment fit, you look at everything in the environment to see multiple forms of stress. And so fit is the idea of like how well do I correspond to what's around uh, me? It's like a shirt. You can have a shirt that fits well, or you can have a shirt that doesn't fit well. If the shirt fits well, it'll look a lot better than the shirt that doesn't work well. Um, so the, the idea here is, is that when the fit is not good, a person may become stressed. Now, the person doesn't necessarily become stressed. Maybe they're just unhappy, but not necessarily stressed. But um, the, uh, um, the idea is that this lack of fit or this bad fit is a is a common way of having stress and there's different ways of measuring person environment fit the first one is the person job fit that's kind of like the the model too you look at what your responsibilities are and what you think you can do in terms of your responsibilities how much those that those responsibilities interest you how fun you find them and that's called the person job fit and if you don't fit into the job well, there's a good chance you're going to feel stressed. If you do fit w into the job well, the pressure is going to tend to keep you in the eustress form. But there's other types of fit also. There's a person organization fit. Maybe you love your job, but the organization is just bizarro. They have values that don't, don't correspond to yours at all. Um, they, uh, they have this vision statement that doesn't mean anything to you. Your boss is always talking about uh, uh, things that, that don't matter to you. You just want to sit there putting the, the widgets on the thingamabob. Um, but your, your boss wants you to develop this, this vision of transforming uh, uh, your, your industry, and that doesn't inter interest you. That would be an example of a person organization fit when your values don't correspond to the values of an organization. And so this person organization fit um, is often how we uh, measure values congruence. A lot of my research has to do with churches. And so we can look at how well do people fit into a church? How well do their values match the values of the church? And generally that's, that's important. Now, unfortunately, it's not always important and but that's a, another story but the um, person organization fit the values congruence when that is missing that can also be a sort a source of stress another type of person environment fit is the person group fit group or team or work group the people that you see every day um, sometimes you might love your job, it might be a great organization, but you are with people that you just don't get along with, or that you have a team that functions in a way that you don't function in. That could be an example of poor person group fit. And there's also the person supervisor fit. You might have a great job, you might have a great team, it might be a great organization, you get a new boss, and that boss just doesn't fit into your work style or the what's important to your boss is not important to you. That would be a lack of per person supervisor fit and that can be a, um, a, a source of stress uh, as well. So this person environment fit is a good way of looking at how an, an organization, how a person fits into everything around them. And there's a lot of literature on this. And so we get these abbreviations. The, the, the PE is the big family of what we ex uh, um, uh, examine, the person environment fit. And we can ex ex um, measure and explore the PE fit by looking at other types of fit. The PJ fit is the person job fit. PO is the person organization fit, the PG fit has to do with the person group, and the PS fit has to do with the person and supervisor. And all of these things can be measured, and we can see 
how these how this fit or lack of fit increases or decreases stress and we can explore under what conditions who are the people that are bothered by person group fit what are the supervisors that are most likely to create um, uh, a lack of person supervisor fit um, what can we do to increase the person job fit so that the person will will have that peak performance in their job these are all uh, uh, questions that have to do with the uh, person environment fit looking at what stresses individuals <music>